So guys, how are we looking? So we are four weeks out, a little bit over four weeks out from the next bodybuilding competition. I am 5% body fat. I have like striated glutes and I'm trying to get to 4% and it's fucking bonkers. It is, I'm losing it. I'm, I'm going crazy here. I'm going hypoglycemic. I'm dying. I do not feel very good. Uh, but t today's video, I promised myself, I promised you guys I'd post once a week. So today we're going to talk about how to stick to a diet. It ain't no secret in how to get shredded, right? Like if you hire me for coaching, I'll put you on what I call a, a hamster diet, right? So what you do, you go to your local uh, PetSmart, you buy a hamster and whatever that hamster eats that's what you eat as well however much that hamster eats you eat the same amount matter of fact buy that hamster one of those treadmill things every time that fucker starts running you run too and i guarantee you'll get shredded like it's literally no secret on how to get shredded the dilemma is how to stick to the diet right like that's the problem that everybody has and me as well you know especially i would say once you get to eight percent body fat and then you try to go for four percent like you're literally just like going insane i am going insane but it's exciting because i've never been this shredded before and i'm continuing to get even more shredded but uh, got a carb up for this video. All right, guys, this video ain't that well thought out. Maybe I'll dive deeper into this later on, but this is some quick tips for you guys. We're in the middle of summertime, so this is kind of uh, some quick tips for you guys. So some things to avoid, protein supplements. Rich Piana said it best when he said there's nothing better than real food, right? So your protein, your protein shakes, take that, throw it out the window. The thing is when you're dieting, right? Like your calories are precious. Why would you waste your calories drinking soda or drinking protein shakes, right? Utilize those calories in in putting actual food down your gullet, right? So I would stay clear from protein shakes, protein powders. Uh, if you want, you could have those protein bars. I do that because I like the taste and yeah, they taste good. They taste like candy. That's why I go with the protein bars. But for the most part, you want to be eating your food. Nothing beats real food. Another common mistake that people make is cheat days or cheat meals. Like people work so hard throughout the week. You do so well throughout the week. You're killing it. And then when the weekend comes, you have your cheat day and all that, your cheat meal. However, people go too crazy and they end up pretty much like undoing 75%, 90% of all their hard work on losing body fat. 
So do not just spin your fucking wheel. Like, if you're gonna diet, diet right. You can have a cheat meal every now and then. I like to reframe it. So it's not really a cheat day or cheat meal. It's just a maintenance day, right? So you want to, your ultimate goal is to maintain your weight. Next tip. You like this shrimp? All right, so here are some things that you guys should do, right? So a great way to stick to a diet is to track your progress, take pictures. I'm a big fan of weighing yourself every day. People say, oh, sodium, water weight or whatever. But if you weigh yourself every day, you get a great idea of how much your body is fluctuating. Right, so I, I weigh myself every day. If you guys are someone that's kind of obsessed or overthinks it, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe just weigh yourself three times a week or maybe four times a week. But it'll give you some insight on averages and how you look throughout the week, right? Be sure to take pictures, track your weight, Check yourself out in the mirror. Sometimes you'll stay the same weight and the scale won't even change. That happens to me countless of times. Sometimes it'll go up even. Maybe you recomped or something like that. So keep that in mind. Like if you see the scale isn't really moving, but you see progress in the mirror, track that progress, you know? Be proud of every little progress that you guys make. Another tip is meal timing. So you guys know me, I'm a bit big advocate of fasting. <coughs> I do intermittent fasting every now and then, pretty much every day. I've done a 24 hour fast. I sometimes do a 36 hour fast. However, ultimately, Meal timing and all that is not for the faint of heart, right? Like, you really got to know what you're doing. There's, like, a gauge, right? Picture a gauge, a critical mirror, a critical fuck. Babe, this video kind of sucks, huh? Why, babe? No? No. So, picture... <laughs> I'm just so like, I have like, guys, I have so much brain fog right now. I am not myself. I'm low energy. I'm hypoglycemic. It's hard to concentrate. And you have ADHD. And I have ADHD. I have ADHD. Uh, what was I talking about again? <laughs> Fuck. Sure. What is this video about again? Some kind of picture of your head. I got Dutch Bros. I'm. <laughs> no, really. What was I talking about? Oh, uh, meal timing. Fasting. All right. So picture a danger gauge, right? So the longer you fast, the more you bring up that danger zone, right? So it's like, uh, DEFCON 5, right? You haven't eaten in a whole day. The chances of you binging and like going nuts on that next meal is very likely. You might just go nuts and it would all be for nothing, right? So there's no point in doing all that, all that fasting, if you're just gonna go balls to the wall for no reason, right? And essentially just cancel out your deficit. Like do not fuck it up. If you're gonna fast, if you're gonna do these fasts, make sure that when you have that, that meal that breaks your fast, that you eat slow and you have the balls to not just go balls to the wall, 
right? Because I've been there and it's not healthy. It's borderline eating disorder because if you go for too long without eating, you just end, end up binging on whatever, right? Like, yeah, you guys see me munching on this, but I have discipline. I'm at 1200 calories so far. And I've been, I did my cardio and all that. I feel like shit, but I'm disciplined. I'm very well experienced with this fasting stuff. So in all honestly, honesty, don't fast. <laughs> do not fast if, do not fast if you can't handle it. Mike Isretel says, nothing beats adherence, right? So whatever helps you stick to that diet, whether it be fasting or not fasting, make sure you keep the calorie deficit and yeah, you should be good. If it fits your macros, pros and cons. Obviously, macros that come from junk food is not gonna fill you up. Like, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I ate 24 gummies. I counted it out, yeah. 24 gummies from Winko. One of my employees handled, handed me, hey Casey, here you go handed me a bag of gummy worms. And I was like, oh, I'll give it to my son. Put it in my pocket. Sure as hell didn't do that. Sure as fuck did not do that. I ate all of it, bro. I ate all of it and then 30 seconds later, it's gone. And it was as if I never ate in the first place. Like that's the difference between junk food and whole foods like get your macros from vegetables from food that's very filling do not fuck yourself like i fucked myself today and that's probably why i'm like so shitty in a bad mood but at the same time i'm looking at it right i'm framing it i'm kind of all over the place with this fucking video my sports psychology is kicking in and it's telling me, hey, you're dying over here, you're going crazy. But that's because you're getting close to 4%, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, types of foods, eat your whole foods, try to stay away from the junk foods, count your macros. That's another thing too. A lot of you motherfuckers, a lot of you subscribers, I know you guys. Oh, I'm having 1800 calories, da 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 da. My friend Jolo, he's like, I'm having 1800 calories today. I'm like, all right. Everybody under tracks, even your boy, right? I actually have to go in the next day and fucking fix it because I lie to myself, right? But then it's like, okay, uh, I feel better during that day lying to myself. And then the next day I feel better uh, fixing it. It's, it's totally weird. Uh, it's, besides the point, my friend Jolo, right? He's like, I'm having 1800 calories. We're chit chatting on the sauna. All right, really, let's talk about it, bro. What did you eat today? Oh, he's like, oh, I, I had a couple of handfuls of nuts. I'm like, here's these nuts. And then um, he's like, I have these bowls of rice. And then I was, we did the math and I was like, bro, you're at like 2,700 calories. You know that, right? He's like, yeah, but if I don't eat enough, I feel like shit. I'm like, that's right, baby. You're supposed to feel like shit. That that means it's working, motherfucker. And what I told him was like, all right, no more nuts. It's so easy to go over. You want nuts? Have these nuts. 
and then I said, all right, cut, cut out, cut half of your rice bowls. Eat half, right? That motherfucker the next week did what I said and he dropped just from not eating nuts and, and cutting his rice in half. He dropped, I want to say like four pounds that week. So a lot of you guys are under tracking. Um, the shirt's not out yet. So once again, calorie deficit, aggressiveness. If you go too aggressive, you're more at risk of binging and spinning your fucking wheel and wasting your damn time and binging. So honestly, this whole game is just like one fucking big dance. Just picture it a bit like that, right? Picture getting shredded, just one big giant fucking dance, one um, waltz, a fucking boxing match, right? You're literally playing with your hunger signals, right? It's like, ugh. Honestly, like, the way I do things is because your energy fluctuates throughout the day, or it's different every day and how many calories you burn is also different each and every day right in all honesty with my meal timing and my uh, meal prep my ultimate goal is just to be just a little bit hungry throughout the entire day and go to bed a little bit hungry at the end of the night Another tip for you guys is to eat at maintenance. If you are struggling with your diet or you've been doing good the past couple days, what have you, but if you're having that one day where it's like, I'm not feeling it today, I'm this close to going to the buffet, change your mindset and just be like, all right, I'm, my goal today is not to lose any weight my goal is to maintain and maintaining in and of itself is very inducive and proactive for weight loss because yes at that moment and at that day you may not be losing weight but it sets you up for the next day to lose even more weight and give you the extra motivation to keep going because like I said, like Mike Israel said, nothing beats adherence, right? So if eating at maintenance is keeping you from going to the buffet or just giving up your diet, reframe it, eat at maintenance. It teaches you as well. It teaches you good habits. And that's, that's something that a lot of people struggle with, even myself is, maintaining right this season's been so fucking crazy i've never maintained being this lean in my entire life but it has been a good skill i have friends that have like immediately after a competition they go straight into bulking like no maintenance phase they're just like all right five percent Fuck that, I'm going to 30%. That's fucking crazy. Like, are you nuts? Like, you know how much fat you're gonna gain? <sighs> I feel bad. I'm calling them out. I've done this before too, guys. Don't get offended or butt hurt by this. I've done this too, but it's not a good idea to just go from 5% body fat to just like, all right. Time to get up to 280 pounds. 
if you have the finances to get a coach, I recommend you guys get a coach. It gets rid of a lot of the guesswork and it makes it makes it easier it makes it easier to just be objective about it and you know it's like a doctor doing surgery on themselves right like doing surgery on yourself you can do it but it's fucking not a good idea but I'm the worst person to say this because I'm literally coaching myself to get to 4% body fat. But hey, I love the challenge, you know? Like, me as of right now, I'm not very coachable. I want to do what I want to do. And with this bodybuilding shit, like, it's the longevity of it for me. If I win, I win. If I don't win, it's whatever, right? Like, for me, I want to continue to c keep competing and get better, right? And do it my own way. I don't wanna. I don't wanna listen to someone else and not listen to how I'm feeling. Ultimately, like I'm. I'm gonna do what I'm gonna wanna do, regardless, right? Like, whether I have a coach or not, like, if my coach were to say, oh, you gotta do this, this, and I don't feel like it, I'm just not gonna do it, which kinda defeats the fucking purpose, right? And there's something to be said about me being able to compete this many times and having a family and all that. What are we fucking talking about right now? This is a long ass video, guys, of just me hanging out with you. We gotta take advantage of it while the kids are in I do this a lot. It's kind of, it's not healthy, but I pace the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen a lot and I'll pace like what I should eat and all that and just like stare blank into my cupboard and into the fridge while the family's watching TV and whatnot. I'm struggling guys, but it's very good. It's a very good thing. This is what I want. I'm very lucky to be where I am. I understand that and I'm lucky to not have any injuries. I haven't had a deload in a fucking long time. And I have been doing a shit ton of cardio. Very blessed to be here right now. And my family supporting me. Very blessed. All right, guys. That's all the tips I got for you. It's kind of a last minute video. There's got to be some shit you guys can take from this video. And um, cop this shirt when it comes out. Huh?